Okay, now I want to add a drop down list to select the membership type for this customer. So back in our controller, in the new action, first we need to get the list of membership types from the database. So var membership types equals context that membership types. Oops, we don't have that DB set here. Let's go to Solution Explorer, open up models, identity models. Here's our application DB context. We need to add a DB set here. Prop DB set of membership type. And we call it membership types. Save. Now we can close this file with shift and escape. So context.membership types to list. Okay, now we need to pass this object to the view. One way is to pass it in the view method here, but this approach is not going to work later when we implement editing a customer. Because there we also need to pass a customer object to this view. So as I explained in the last section, in situations like that, we create a view model that encapsulates all the data required by this view. So back in Solution Explorer, right click view models, add a new class, new customer view model. Okay, in this view model, we need a list of membership types. So prop, we can either use the list object here, list of membership type, like this, or we can use I enumerable. What's the difference? Well, in the view, we don't need any of the functionality provided by the list class, like adding an object, removing an object, accessing an object by index. All we need is a way to iterate over the membership types. So if we use I enumerable, we get that functionality. Now, if in the future we replace the list with another collection, we don't have to come back and modify this view model, as long as that collection implements I enumerable. So this way, our code is more loosely coupled. Now in this view model, we also need properties of our new customer. We can either use the customer type here, or explicitly add its properties, like name, birth date, and so on. Which approach should we use? It depends. If you can reuse the existing domain object, that should be your preference. But sometimes, in large, complex applications, how you present an entity on a view can be different from how it's defined in the domain model of your application. In those situations, if you want to reuse the existing entity, you may end up polluting that entity by adding additional properties, which are only required by a view. In that case, you really need to separate the domain and view models and let each model evolve independently. But in case of our add customer form, we don't have this scenario, so it's better and easier to reuse this customer entity. Okay, our view model is ready. Now back to our action. We need to initialize it here. View model equals new, new customer view model. and set membership types here. And then we pass it to the view, view model. Now let's go back to the view. On top of the view, first we need to change the type of the model for this view. So it's going to be new customer view model. Now you see we have a bunch of errors here because this view model does not have properties like name, or birth date. So we need to prefix them with customer. Customer. And we got one more here. Customer. Okay, now to add a drop down list, I'm going to select this form group, copy, and paste it below the checkbox. Change the label to membership type ID. And then instead of text box four, I'm gonna use drop down list four. This drop down list is for 
membership type ID property. Now here, as the second argument to this method, we need to supply the list of items for the dropdown list. So we pass new select list. This is one of the types in ASP.NET MVC that we use to initialize a dropdown list. The first argument to the constructor of this class is the list of items. So that's model dot membership types. As the second argument, we need to specify the name of the property in membership type class that holds the value for each item. So that's going to be the ID property. The third argument is the property that holds the text for each item. So that's going to be the name property. Now, after this select list, we supply another argument and I'm gonna pass an empty string here. This will add a blank item on top of my dropdown list. Or I can change this to select membership type. And the last argument is the class as before. Now let's compile the application, Control Shift B, back to the browser, refresh. Okay, here's our dropdown list. So the label is membership type ID, which I'm going to overwrite in a second. And look, this is the first item that is selected by default. And here we have our membership types. Now back to Visual Studio. Let's go to Solution Explorer. In the models folder, open up the customer class and apply display data annotation on membership type ID property. And here we set the name, membership type. Now to make this code clean and consistent, I would like to add a vertical space between each property because currently you see all these properties and data annotations mixed together look a little bit ugly. So vertical space, another one, another one. Now you can easily read this code and see what data annotations are applied to what properties. Let's build, back to the browser, refresh. Okay, membership type ID is changed to membership type. 